Hello! So this is going to be my October wrap up and for October I tried to read a lot of spooky kind of books so that it would fit in with the whole theme of October. I also have some October-y creepy things going on back here. I have this little black pumpkin that I carved that says Boo and this is my Haunter pumpkin. Very very proud of him. Yes, me and my sister carved Pokemon themed pumpkins and uh... I don't remember what she carved because it was a uh, not in the original 151 Pokemon and once I get beyond generation 3 I'm totally lost. But we carved those pumpkins together and I actually have this little guy, Gizmo the Mogwai from the movie Gremlins and he's pretty Halloween-y. I know the movie takes place during Christmas time but it's always an appropriate Halloween movie especially when the Gremlins come out. But anyway, back to the book stuff. I was actually going to start with the my least favorite book and then work up to my most favorite book, keep that one for last. The book that I was most disappointed in was the first book that I finished this month. And that book is You're Never Weird on the Internet by Felicia Day. And I was incredibly disappointed in this book because I really like Felicia Day. I was first introduced to her through Supernatural. And it's one of my favorite TV shows, so I figured, well, she was in Supernatural and she's considered queen of the geeks and a gamer and all that other stuff that I'm into, so why not get her memoir or autobiography thing? Not what I was expecting. It's more a history of her and kind of like why she's so special and she was homeschooled and her family's left-leaning or liberal or whatever she's calling it and... She's special, but they're poor, but they can afford really expensive violin lessons, and alright, I'm bored now. So a book that I was completely expecting to enjoy because of the gaming aspects to it, and the nerd stuff, and she's involved with Supernatural, and Joss Whedon, and all that other stuff, and just, I'm sorry Felicia Day, you were, you were a great disappointment. The next book I read was The Suffering by Rin Chupeco. This is a sequel to a duology that starts with The Girl in the Well, which I loved. I talked about that in my spooky reads. I also mentioned this briefly in my spooky reads uh, for October. This is a continuation of The Girl in the Well. Obviously, that's a continuation of The Girl in the Well. I said it was a sequel. So this book picks up where the last one left off, and I really enjoy this one. Not as much as the first one. It wasn't as creepy, I guess you could say. Creepy, they go to this place in Japan called the Suicide Forest, and it's got this really crazy name. Uh, Aokigahara. Aokigahara. Something like that. And just kind of craziness and creepiness comes from there, but I enjoyed it almost as much as the first one. And I think I enjoyed it the most because of the way it ended it gave a really good solid ending and it was a good way to just conclude this duology and it was a nice way to not just extend it beyond its lifespan. The next thing I read which I do not have a copy of because I borrowed it from my sister was The Long Halloween which is a Batman graphic novel. It is supposedly one of the greatest Batman graphic novels that they've ever had. Uh, I know Christopher Nolan based his his Batman trilogy on that and you could see a lot of the things that were in The Long Halloween if you've seen his Batman trilogy appear in that. So it was really good. I really enjoyed it and it's, it's a graphic novel so I read it really fast but if you're into Batman or graphic novels at all definitely pick it up. The next book that I read was From Bad to Cursed by Katie Allender which is a sequel to Bad Girls Don't Die. And this sequel was actually pretty disappointing. The first book was creepy and the characters were great and they were very unique. And then you get to this second one and the characters are kind of dull, I guess, is the word that I'm looking for. It's not nearly as creepy. The bad guy isn't really as bad. It's just a little weird. And I was just overall disappointed with the book. It is, a, it is a trilogy, so I'm kind of hoping maybe the third one makes it better. If I ever wind up picking up the third one, I'll probably just get it from the library. Because uh, I still stand by my feelings that it should have just been a standalone book with Bad Girls Don't Die because that was fantastic. But I guess we'll have to see what happens. I next read Batman from the New 52 Volume 1 The Court of Owls. 
I picked this up while I was in a comic shop in Pennsylvania with my sister. And the guy highly recommended this. Uh, we had a long conversation about continuity and being a completionist and uh, reading every single comic that's ever been created or written for a superhero character and that it's pretty much impossible unless you started from the beginning. So he said this is a great place to start and it really was. The, the artwork is fantastic in here. The storyline is great. I always love getting little glimpses into aspects of Batman that I've never been aware of before and I can't wait to get my hands on the second one of this. Killer Instinct by S.E. Green was something that I thought I was really going to like. It actually sounded really similar to another book series that I had read uh, called I Am Not a Serial Killer by Dan Wells, which is amazing. And this is similar because they both have two teenagers who feel a really strong connection to serial killers. They're obsessed with them. They think they might be one, one of them. But where it diverges is Dan Wells' story was actually well written and had a good plot and it just was enjoyable. In this one it felt forced. The character feeling that she identified with serial killers and that she was tracking a serial killer and it just didn't feel as real as Dan Wells' story did and it was just disappointing for me. I don't intend to get the second one. If you're if you're interested in, in stories where teenagers are, are like that or they're obsessed with serial killers or you're interested in serial killers, drop this one and go pick up I Am Not a Serial Killer by Dan Wells because it's by far head, shoulders, torso above this. An Addressed in Blood by Kendari Blake was also a disappointing book for me. It's actually similar to The Girl from the Well. I just realized I've been saying that wrong this whole time, calling her the girl in the well, but it's the girl from the well. So An Addressed in Blood is about this kid who is a hunter and he goes around killing spirits and stuff like that and he's his one goal in life other than finding the demon that killed his father is being the best and going after Anna who just happens to be the strongest creature there ever was or something like that. And what immediately threw me off this book was the first two pages where there's about six references to the TV show Supernatural. And there's nothing wrong with having references to the source material in your book or something that you really like. In the first couple of pages you have a kid named Kaz which, you know, is oddly like Castiel. He's a hunter. Castiel was at one point a hunter in Supernatural. And he's interacting with this guy who I believe his name is actually Dean. I don't remember now and I'm not going to look. But he, And he has an old car and I can't remember what kind of car it was, but I believe it was a Mustang, which is even more of an annoyance because the Impala was originally supposed to be a Mustang in Supernatural. And the guy calls his car Baby. And... Yeah. I mean, come on, like, you want to pay homage to Supernatural, fine, great, whatever, but you're really doing it a little too much. And then the first ghost that he goes to kill is almost exactly like the pilot episode of Supernatural. I, uh, Kendari Blake, please. I was disappointed in this. I'm not going to read the second part to it in this duology just because she, she threw me off so bad with, with the beginning. And then I just didn't find the ending to be worth it. So sorry, Anna dressed in blood. Maplecroft by Sherry Priest. I have read amazing things about Sherry Priest and how she's great and I actually have one of her other books and it's based on the nursery rhyme of Lizzie Borden who I was obsessed with for a period of time when I was younger because I found the nursery rhyme interesting um, and it puts an interesting spin on it where instead of Lizzie just kind of going crazy and killing her parents she kills them because they're turning into monsters and this was really interesting and enjoyable but it was slow in the beginning it's set in the late 1800s when lizzie borden actually lived they, they speak the way they did back then and and even though lizzie really kicks butt in this she's also constrained by the constraints that women had back then and that was a little frustrating for me but once you get to like the last third of the book or by the time you get to the last third of the book you're kind of like oh hey this was so slow 100 pages ago and now it's going really fast and it's actually really engaging me. So it was interesting. I will probably pick up the second one. Uh, not my favorite for the month though. Dead House by Dawn Kurtagich. 
Kerkatich. I had a hard time saying this for my Comic-Con video too. So this book is done actually oddly enough almost in the House of Leaves way but in a way that's engaging and cool and good where it's based on a journal it's based on journal entries and found video footage and post-it notes and stuff like that of this girl who supposedly has dissociative identity disorder and her altar and you know where did this altar come from it's supposedly been with her for her entire life but everyone thinks that it only appeared after uh, her parents died and then there's some kind of magical demon stuff going on it was really good up until the end and the end was such a letdown it was almost like the author had no idea how she wanted it to end so she was just like all right this makes sense let's just throw this together and everyone will eat it up because the first three quarters of the book were amazing no sorry but the, the characters were intriguing. I really enjoyed the two alters between Carly and Caitlin. Is it a true dissociative identity disorder or is it some kind of demon possession? And the supporting characters were interesting, but the, the ending just really didn't do it for me. So, I mean, I would recommend it. Maybe the ending will do it for you, but the because the beginning and the middle are really good, but it was a letdown. The Girl with All the Gifts by M. R. Carey. This was such an interesting take on zombies and the zombie virus and I really really enjoyed this. It's, it's really deep and it talks a lot about humanity and morality and the, the, the character Melanie is great. I loved Melanie. I can't say enough good things about this story. Even if you're not interested in zombies, pick this up because the zombies aren't necessarily the central part of the story which sounds kind of weird considering it's a zombie novel but it's totally worth it there's really only one problem i had with it and i'm not going to talk about it because it's a little bit of a spoiler i even talked to some people on goodreads about it because i was just it really really bugged me and we kind of resolved it a little but um, i just let it go because i enjoyed the book so much and who cares that there was one thing i really didn't care for so definitely pick up The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. It's great. Wink Poppy Midnight by April Genevieve Chuchoke. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this because it actually doesn't come out until March 2016. I got this from Comic-Con. My signed copy of the book. It's awesome. The book is just amazing in itself. I gave it five stars on Goodreads because I just loved it that much. Uh, maybe once March rolls around I'll do a review for it because this is something that's going to stick with me even till then because it was just that good. My favorite book of the month of October was The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey and I passed this book up so many times. I can't even say how many times I saw it in the bookstore and was like no not gonna buy it and most of that was because I absolutely hate the cover. I hate it. I don't know what it is about the cover. I, I don't like the way the five is. I don't like the way the words are around the five. I don't like the colors or the girl or... I just hate this cover. And I looked at it and said I'm not buying it. And then I kept hearing amazing things about it. And the movie's coming out and I wanted to see the movie. So I had to pick up the book and read the book first. And it was totally worth it. I, I, I squealed. I flailed. I was grabbing onto my face because I, I was just in so much emotional distress while reading it and it was really worth it. I'm so glad I finally picked this up. For those of you unfamiliar with the story, it is an alien invasion with different waves that come and decimate the human population so that the aliens can do what aliens do when they come to Earth and take us over. And that follows this girl Cassie and a couple of other characters. There were a couple of things that bothered me in the book. Uh, at one point, Cassie says something along the lines of how she saw two people die in front of her. So she's seen more people die in the past six months than anyone in the history of humanity. And I, I really, I rolled my eyes so hard at that. I'm ro I was rolling my eyes. Now I'm still rolling them because that's just so ridiculous. But that between that and the other thing that bothered me where he's constantly calling the magazines that they're putting into their guns clips which is factually wrong wrong rick yancey wrong i overlooked all that because the book just made me so happy inside 
in a sad kind of way, but enjoyably. Show the fifth wave, yes. I will be seeking out the Infinite Sea and then the next one, which comes out sometime in 2016, and I'll be seeing the movie in January. But if you were a fool like me and didn't want to pick it up for whatever reason, I really recommend it. And that is it for the month of October. This is my October wrap-up. So let me know if you read any of these books, if you were looking forward to these books, if you're looking forward to any of the sequels of these books. I'm not sure how many of them have sequels, but let me know. And that's it for tonight. Say bye, Gizmo! Such a loser. <laughs>